Good Friday. Good Friday is powerful. Good Friday is about love. Good Friday is about us recognising that we are loved. We can concentrate on what happened to Jesus, we can focus on the actions of the day, but we would miss the fundamental message, which is Good Friday is about love. Good Friday is about a God who is love, giving everything so that we are loved. When we hear in that video, why would Jesus go to the cross for Barabbas? The question is, why would Jesus go to the cross for me? And the answer is the same. The answer was the same 2,000 years ago as it is today. Jesus goes to the cross because he is love. And when we understand that incredible love and when we accept and receive that wonderful love, our lives are different. When we see a broken life, it's a life that is bereft of love. And when we see a restored life, it is one that is full and overflowing with love. And when we look at this wonderful story about Barabbas, I'm going to focus on that a little bit today. I'm going to talk about what was going on with Barabbas and more importantly, what was happening in the crowd. We see that an absence of love is what causes us to fall away. An absence of love calls us to fall in to brokenness, into evil. But when we are swamped with the love of God, that's the antidote to evil. God's plan was pretty straightforward. He didn't come down and say, I'm going to wipe out all evil with my might and my punishment. Because if he did that, who of us could stand? Sure, we're capable of incredible good, but we are capable of incredible evil as well. You and I, we are born again. We are born of the Holy Spirit, but the old human still resides. And if Jesus were to come down and look at us and say, in our natural state, let me have a look at you. And I'm going to fix the world's problems, all the world's problems, by wiping out evil. What's left? But you see, God's ways are a paradox to us. God's ways are higher than ours and God's ways are always wrapped in his love. God's solution was not to come down and destroy. God's solution was to love and to love more intimately than we could ever know. So God's solution to sin, to brokenness, to violence was love. So he took that brokenness, sin, violence on himself and gave to the world love. And that was the solution. And when we hang on to the solution and when we enter into his love, we are renewed. But when we stay in the place we were before, where we don't receive that love, we are broken. When we stay in that place where we're not bathing in the love of God, we drift away from the will of God. We drift into a different place. So on the day that Jesus was crucified, I remember Pilate was there and there was Jesus, son of God, and there was Barabbas. And look at the name, Barabbas. Barabbas simply means son of a father. If you recall, Jesus, when he was talking to his heavenly father, he said, Abba, Father. In other words, Abba is simply a word for father. And Ba simply means son. Barabbas is simply son of a father. So when Pilate is presenting Barabbas on one hand and Jesus on the other, he's saying to the crowd, do you choose this person who is a son of a human being or do you choose this person who is the Son of God. And this person's solution is God's solution. 
And it means going to the cross and releasing love. This person's solution, we know from the Gospels that Barabbas was somebody who led an insurrection. Somebody who took into his own hands the liberation of his people. Not looking to God, but looking to himself. And so the crowd choice. Do we want to be saved? Do we want to be liberated by the work of a natural person with their natural abilities? Or do we want to be saved by the work, the paradoxical work of God? And we know the answer, don't we? Pilate comes out and produces these two people and says, which one do you choose? And they don't choose God. The crowd chooses God. Barabbas, the crowd says, I don't trust the work of this God. I'm familiar with the work of this human. So we're in the crowd now. You and I, everyone, we're in the crowd and we're watching this. But we've seen this man, Jesus. We know him. We've heard his teaching we know that he teaches with authority we know that he has command over the natural elements we know that he commands the spiritual realm we've seen it and despite the fact that we've seen that we are in the middle of the crowd and the crowd sways us and we join crucify him release him You see, when we feel unloved, we can be swayed by the crowd. When we feel that we are not worthy and we don't deserve the love of God or the love of anybody else, we are swayed by the toing and froing of other people. And yet, when we feel loved, we have a confidence that can look the crowd in the eye and say, no thank you. I know where you're going and that's not for me. I know what is on the other side of this decision. I've been there. I've seen it. I prefer this. So today is a day for us to examine. Are we feeling loved? Are we truly experiencing the love that comes from our Savior who graciously lavishes love on us through his action on the cross? And because the action the Holy Spirit means that we can enter that love continuously. Or is there stuff that stops us from doing that and we're in the crowd feeling unloved and being swayed? Are you swaying today? Or are you stable? Saying, I am strong in the love of Christ. The crowd then chooses the solution to their problems, not being the work of this guy, Jesus, but they endorse the work of somebody who led an insurrection. Their endorsement says, I don't trust the work of God in this. I trust the work of humans. And you see, when we don't feel loved... We go back into old habits and old patterns and those old habits and old patterns are not necessarily good. Just because we've seen that and we are familiar with it doesn't mean it's right. Oftentimes when we are craving love we'll fall into a pattern that is destructive. There was no future in what Barabbas was going to do and yet a bunch of people who are unloved, who are craving the endorsement and the love of God are drawn to what a human can offer. And yet Christ says, feel and experience my love and then you will trust what I do. And trust that I have authority in all of heaven and in all of earth. And when we do that, our love makes a difference in our life, in our relationships, in our interactions. This is what God wants for us. I 
we swaying because we are feeling unloved? Do we doubt the ability of God? Are we in a situation now where we think, I don't think God can do anything about this? But we have to check ourselves and say, am I experiencing the full love of God? Because if we are feeling the full love of God, we have no doubt that God can and will enter our situation. So then we move to the cross and we've got another contrast. Two sinners that are crucified. And it's bad enough that if we're feeling unloved, we can be swayed by the crowd. It's bad enough that we can doubt the motive, the intention, the authority of Jesus. But then sometimes our situation is in such despair, like the guy on the cross, that we start to mock Jesus. And we start to think that we are smarter than God. And we can use our own logic. And we say to God, prove to me that you are God. Let me mock you because my situation is despair. And out of the hurt and the absence of love, I am firing back vitriol to God. And I'm saying to you, prove it to me because I'm smarter than you. And of course, when we look at what God does from a human perspective, sometimes it doesn't make sense. But if we, in all honesty, follow what makes sense from a human perspective, imagine where we would be. But Jesus' antidote is still the same. Even if you're in despair, even if you're in so much pain that your natural instinct is to strike out, he says, are you experiencing my love? Have you recognized what I did on the cross? And are you full of the Holy Spirit so that you can enter that and that you can experience my love? Because if you did, no earthly situation would put you into a place of despair where you could mock the ruler of the universe. Impossible. So where are we today? Where are we as his believers. You see, even as believers in Christ, we can still feel unloved. We can still feel beat up. So today, what's happening in our heart? Are we experiencing the love of Christ so any of those natural desires to strike out are pushed away? Are we feeling the full love of God so that the doubts about his intentions and about his authority and about his presence in our life are removed? Are we feeling such an overwhelming love that we are not swayed by the crowd? You see, Jesus' antidote is always the same. You're beloved. I'm beloved. His antidote is always the same. Bring to me those things that are tearing you apart and lay them on me so that you can experience my love. When we picture Jesus on the cross, scarred, when we picture him on the cross, wounded, we picture those emotions that are hurting us, that are piercing our soul, that are cutting us deep. And we give them back to him and say, I know you took these for me. I trust you. I'm not swayed by the people who say that that was just an historic event. I don't doubt that you took all of this for me onto the cross. And rather than mock you, I am on the other side of the cross. And I'm saying, Jesus, remember me. And we can say that together. We can say with a full heart, with a trusting heart, with a believing heart, we can say, remember me, Jesus. Let me unload these things to you and let me experience your love. 
the fullness of your love afresh. We're going to have an opportunity now to do that as I pray. What's swaying us? What's causing us to doubt? What's causing us to want to strike out? Let's take these to the cross. Let's take these and see that it's marked on Jesus and removed from us. Why don't we pray? Lord, this holy day, this day that is complete love, may we be swamped with your love. If there are things in our life that are causing us to sway, if there are things in our life that are causing us to doubt, if there are things in our life that are causing us to strike out, Lord, we are picturing those placed on you. And we call Holy Spirit, come now and touch our hearts so that we experience your love. That we are your beloved. In your name we pray. Amen.